Hello and welcome to part two of the organ project. We're currently in the room where the organ is going to reside. I've done some work on it already and it is just about the right height. If we get this is the this is the tallest of the organ pipes. If we get up, it's gonna be about 15 centimeters from the ceiling when it's up there. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. So what we're gonna do next is paint the walls. I'm gonna make it look like the house it came from by giving it a bit of a burgundy bit of paint with some wood skirting boards. It's gonna look lovely. Let's get going. Also gonna break up the red and the gray with some nice wooden-ish skirting board things. Oh yes, it's looking good, there we go. As you can see, it sort of looks like Joan's stairwell. This is the double D, it's the largest one that hasn't been bent over. Uh, I've learned the term as mitered. So first up today, we need to get this pump going and then hopefully we'll get some sound coming out of a couple of pipes. This bit, this bit. Oh yeah. First test of the pump, we've got it plugged into a Rio stat just to double check it. Let's bring it up. Oh, it's actually spinning. No, oh, it works. <laughs> oh, that doesn't get lighter. That does not get lighter. If the pump is this loud alone, how loud is the organ going to be? All right, one more time, just for good luck. It just gets. Here we go. first thing that we needed to do was sort out this. This box is apparently called the blower. However, I'm gonna call it Dave. It's got new soundproofing in it. Then I tested the motor itself. Initially it didn't work. That's because uh, the transformer that it used that transferred 240 volts to 210 volts seems to be a dud. It seems to be dead. As you can tell right now, it's really noisy. So it will be interesting to see how it works when everything else is plugged in. Now we've got Dave up and running, it's time to get Trisha going. I'm not sure of the name, hence the name Trisha. It's the thing with the bellows, it's called Trisha. Uh, we've got this, which is gonna strap on to Trisha. And what this is, is the bit that connects Trisha to Dave. Inside of it, there is a governing flap. So when Dave blows into Trisha, uh, and Trisha gets too full, uh, Trisha basically closes the hole up. Oh God, this is gonna be a right faff. You see in there, there's the metal shutter door. And we can lift it up and lower it down. Using this right here. So the bellows are completely closed right now. So what we need to do, pull it along so it's pretty much open when the bellows are at their most closed. Lovely jerky. Right, so in theory, Dave right here is going into Trisha right here. So hopefully there'll be air blowing through both of them. Let's uh, turn it on. Oh, oh, it's 
definitely. <gasps> no. No way. I've got to show you that again. Are you ready for this? Let's turn it on. So, turn it on. And watch it go. Watch it. Wait for it. Wait for it. No. <laughs> Time for the first test. We've got Dave, which is the blower, blowing into Trish, which is the bellows, blowing into Stanley, which is the bass wind chest. Stanley has a big old pipe. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this nine volt battery right here. We're gonna use this to uh, turn on the valves that are underneath the pipe, if you listen. So let's give it a test and see if we can actually get some noise out. So let's get up to 200 volts. Ish. 210. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Watch it expand. And now let's give it a go. Okay, so I've improved it a little bit. What I've done is I've bunged up all of the holes that aren't currently being used with bits of wood. So now we can really test it. So let's uh, plug it in. Right, so it seems like a bit of a balancing act with the weights. I feel that these are all gonna change throughout the time that more stuff is being plugged into. As you can hear, there are some drafty bits blowing around, so it's a case of figuring out where they are over time and just plugging them in with something. But because I've added more weight, this is way noisier. Uh, you can hear a couple of them still going, so let's, let's play it. Oh yeah. That is so cool. And the big mama. It actually works. So inside of Stanley, you will see this valve solenoid thingamajiggies there right here. And I figured I should just quickly show you what they actually look like when you put a bit of voltage through them. So uh, you charge up the coils and it basically just pulls down the uh, little stopper and lets the air that's inside here out through the pipe, which is up here. Look at that. This is easier than that, and then you want that one to go, you just put electricity through that one. So now it sort of makes noise. It doesn't really make a musical noise, but it makes a noise. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually try and plug it into a keyboard. Uh, the electronics that is gonna stay here and actually work, we're gonna talk about in the next video, uh, which will be in a couple of weeks or something when a circuit board turns up that are designed. However, in the meantime, I figured we could do a little bit of a test, a bit of a quick and dirty test. What we're gonna use is this pretty dusty box right here. What this is, is something that I built to control the flame throwing organ is something that I built a few years back. It was an organ that instead of using air, it used compressed butane. And then that went through these copper pipes and made the sound. And then as the gas left the pipes, it got ignited by the little pilot flame in front of it. I built it completely out of copper, so it was a little bit less susceptible to the temperature. I did actually test it with a dodgy tin church pipe that I got off eBay, but it actually just went <laughs> So I had to go to copper. And making and voicing and tuning those copper organ pipes really gave me a crash course into finding out how much of a pain in the ass 
tuning and kind of sorting out these things are gonna be. But that's that's another thing. We'll worry about it when we get to it, right? First off, we need to plug it into this then. What this does is it receives a digital signal from a musical keyboard via MIDI. MIDI is a communication protocol that is made for keyboards. And what you do is you plug in a MIDI cable into here and there's some microchips here called Arduinos. And these decode that data and figure out which of the organ pipes it needs to turn on. These little chunks right here are what are called MOSFETs. What they are are basically electronic switches. The microchip up here basically tells that switch to switch on using a little bit of electricity. And and then that MOSFET lets even more electricity through enough to actually drive these things right here. Because the microchip wouldn't have enough power to directly drive these. In fact, in some circumstances, these would cause damage to the microchip. So that's why we use these thingamajiggies. So what I'm going to do is rather jankly wire this box into it and see if we can get some sort of music out of it. So let's give it a test. Okay, it's working. Now let's wire it in to the organ. I've just soldered a bunch of wires onto the back of the connectors on here. So we're gonna connect these up to the designated pipes. Well, we've gotta figure out which wires are actually connected to these pipes and we'll be able to sort of play it maybe. Right, so we have C1 right here. When I press this button, this LED turns on next to that MOSFET. So this is gonna be the one to plug into this one right here. There we go. Yes. <laughs> so I've just finished figuring out which pipe is which and apparently this isn't actually two octaves worth. It's actually the same octave but twice in two different sounds. Well there we go. From a non-organist there, there was a surprise. So first I'm going to roughly tune them. Luckily with these they're kind of simple. They've got these collars on top that change the height of the organ pipes a little bit, that kind of makes them longer and shorter so you can just fine tune the note. Uh, I can't quite reach behind the big C right now so I'm going to figure out where that is. I'm just going to do this all by ear right now so we get a sort of tune out of it. So they're, they're sort of in tune. That one's out so let's go and hit that one first. This has only got major notes in it by the way. I'm hoping to get all of the white keys on here done by the end of this video, so. see in the next video on the church organ. We're probably going to see me listening in and trying to find all the leaks in the air system because there's a fair few. I've plugged up quite a few already. It keeps on getting quieter and quieter but there's always those whistles so I've just got to I've got to track them down. It's gonna be a couple of weeks because I'm waiting for a circuit board that I've designed which will make a more permanent solution like this 
for all of the pipes, which means we can start building it up more and more and starting to work on the other ranks of pipes as well. We took this out of the house about a week ago. I'm reasonably pleased with the progress that I've had so far. I had it just working in time for the museum to open this weekend. This project has actually garnered a lot more emails than I think I've ever received about a single project before. I'm sorry if I haven't replied to them already. The truth is, is I'm awful on emails. If I'm honest, if I was good on emails, I probably wouldn't get anything else done. So I'm not being a bumhead towards you. I'm just really rubbish on emails. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. There's a three minute long WAV recording of the Philip Glass S kind of sound and that's available over on Patreon so if you want to support this endeavor watch some more videos and watch more frequent vlogs on this and much other things then go and check it out over there because it really helps support this project and the museum anyway until next time I'm Luke Mano Computer this is Jones Organ if you like we see don't forget to subscribe and yeah don't scared to try it maybe maybe don't try this one it's a bit silly <laughs> oh Sam you don't know what you're doing why did you cut all the wires with a hacksaw when you pulled it out of the house you're never gonna be able to figure out which one's which? You're never gonna be able to tune them all, Sam. What are you doing? Sam, you don't know what you're doing. No, Sam, you don't know at all. Sam, you're so stupid. You don't know what you're doing. No. You just don't know what you're doing. You're never gonna be able to get it working again. You silly boy. Sam. 